Lastly, this pleasant surprise, wow, what the, was my subsequent thinking. There was a massive brightness when I raised my eyes to see, out of nowhere, my terror diminished. Spaceships and universes spun about me as I grew. It was incredible, I had become a stranger experiencing feelings independently of my thoughts. An infinite awareness witnessing itself permeates every molecule, atom, lifetime, earth, and universe. For unlimited mind connection, a near-death experience is unnecessary. Owing to their dissimilarities, they share an unbreakable bond of love. I came from a Catholic family. Two elder and four younger boys precede me. I am the third of seven. They were wonderful parents. College was a great place for me to meet many adults. A lady almost got my horoscope right. She informed me that, unknowingly, I possessed a great deal of psychic talent and would use it all my life. Excuse me, I started reading with standard playing cards. A number of psychics I know gave me readings. It was two psychics in Austin who told me I had a strong psychic gift when I first arrived. That was how I felt when I was a girl playing with my brothers. Although my mother is a Cancer, my zodiac sign is Scorpio. A majority of us fall under the masculine fire and air signs. Trouble was constantly on the horizon for me. Hold on a second, isn't this plainly obvious? Everyone can see it. Clearly, that is not true. In 1977, around the end of January, I began to experience weird sensations as if I could foretell what was ahead. After practicing on my roommates, I went to the store the following day and discovered I could read their thoughts. We proceeded to a pub with my roommate. As we stepped inside, I had a vague feeling of a certain location, but I couldn't locate it. I marched to the front and took a seat at the bar after the noise level in the band room reached an intolerable level. I considered stepping outside to breathe some fresh air. In an instant, I was right back where I had been, staring at passers-by. Even when I opened my eyes, I remained seated on the bar stool. As soon as the door opened, they walked in wearing the same clothes I'd seen earlier. What a shock! I thought to myself, would you like me to say that again? I fantasized of going outside after seeing people doing so. Upon my roommate's arrival, I displayed it to him. He was astounded. Nothing made sense to me anymore. By the second or third day, this mental ability had taken on a life of its own distinct from the norm. There is no longer any separation between our conscious and subconscious minds. The purpose of that wall is to let us go about our everyday lives as usual. My psychic abilities, spiritual life, and subconscious all materialized when I lost it. After waiting a few days, I noticed these indicators and screens. A more astute observer was keeping tabs on me. The why, the when, and the how are all mysteries to me. In spite of my limited comprehension, it brought me comfort to know that these counselors were keeping an eye on me. I was frightened after just one week of this incredible telepathic ability. Joy and genius were supplanted by terror. Guadalupe Street was the site of my prayers, cries, and screams. Despite the crowds, I enjoyed my time on Austin's Guadalupe Street. Lastly, this pleasant surprise, wow, what the, was my subsequent thinking. There was a massive brightness when I raised my eyes to see. Out of nowhere, my terror diminished. Physically, mentally, and spiritually, I felt at peace. As I turned around, I noticed a throng. You okay, buddy? They peered at me, blind to the light. Suddenly, I noticed light emanating from a crystal table that was approximately this thick. It was sent by seven entities dressed in white robes. Their expressionless faces hid their drab features. Their very being was paramount. Were the words, do you trust us? Implied? Wow, you're the monitors. Why, yes, do you trust us? I sought explanation due to my confusion. Once again, they asked, do you trust us? The last thing I said was, absolutely. In half a second, a speeding car slammed into me. I witnessed my body flip while standing outside the car. The world shrank until Austin was barely a dot. I was able to see the Earth from every angle since I could stretch out in every direction. As planets and galaxies whirled about me, I lost track of my own awareness. Enjoyable like a risk-free thrill ride. It was as if I had arrived at the very edge of space and time. We experienced it firsthand or imagined it. A vivid realm of consciousness that I dubbed colors sprang up in my mind the moment it happened. Because of our developed senses and brain power, we were able to comprehend our own identity and where we came from at the moment of our birth. Suddenly, I was whisked away from the universe and surrounded by a sky filled with billions of universes. 
After I left one, there were a plethora of others. A vast light tunnel seemed to open up before them. It took courage and was remarkable. My mind was free after this light tunnel. Anything good or bad can happen in the blink of an eye when one's intelligence has no bounds. All boundless, unbiased imagination is encompassed. It is essential to all forms of life. Every single thing is real only because it is. There is no middle ground. We live in a universe every single day. At tomorrow's store, instead of turning left, you can co-create a new cosmos. Molecular and conceptual life is in a perpetual state of flux. Despite appearances, many realities are strangely intertwined. Its enchantment and beauty from all directions are beyond my comprehension. There is just a broad conceptual explanation at this time. Even if it is in our world or universe, everything exists in some. There is no end to the range of things that can be manifested from the tiniest atom to the largest universe and back again to us humans and beyond. Nothing is impossible. The fascinating thing is that every atom, molecule, lifetime, planet, and universe is based on an infinite intellect watching itself. I write about the instant pull of spiritual gravity in my book. Uncertainty gripped me. I didn't want to change my situation, but I couldn't. I felt a tremendous pull toward my universe. Hours as I ascended back to the sky via this light tunnel, I dove in, remembering the vivid hues and dissolving into a state of pure bliss. I felt anxious since I didn't know who I was, but I loved the place I went. Am I heading somewhere? I have no idea. So what transpired? Witnessing Earth's surface restored my feeling of home. The three upcoming events that I foretold are detailed in my book. This present age, often known as the Aquarian period, the return of Christ, the change, etc., is the first. Transformed over a hundred years, we have finally made it to the peak after all this mayhem. The other side, the world beyond, was shown in pictures, and they were both stunning and strange to me. We are now in the age of Aquarius. A lot of energy will be available to us. No matter how many billion there are, I will never be able to predict Earth's population. Everything is shifting, and the result is influenced by people's free choice in diverse ways. A simple right or left turn can generate an entirely different cosmos for everybody. Somehow, we will achieve that level of awareness. There are no substitutes. For our species, that is the future. What follows are pictures of me. It was me, and I had no clue. As he fought with the keys, I could see that this pianist was in pain. Then I beheld my own body. Upon realizing, wow, that's me, I leaped inside of myself. When I opened my eyes, a man with red hair was yelling at me. As soon as I blinked, his crimson locks were brushing against my cheek. Standing was an uphill battle for me. It was terrifying. Easy as pie. My life has been spared by all. I was unaffected. Police along with ambulances and additional police showed there not long after. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to locate a body in the road. We were having a conversation. According to them, he's the guy. She confidently declared, yep, I'm the one. At what point did I stand? Some answers were sought. You know I said, I'm here on my feet like you. Their concern was for my well-being. My life would be completely different if that meeting hadn't taken place. In the month of February 1977, for a long time, I didn't understand why this was happening to me. I should have known. Did I just happen to get picked at random? Who brought up that subject? Eight or nine months after that, at the time it surprised me the most, I had my second most impactful encounter. The first is a description of the trip I made a week prior, along with my thoughts and feelings about it. With the help of my guides, I continued. Even after eight months, I could still feel their presence. I continued to play guitar, perplexed by the events that had transpired. Suddenly, I sensed their presence. It was like they were there in my front yard, shining this light on my brain. When they said, you had this experience because you always want to know, I could hear them. There is a longing within you to strengthen your relationship with God. Your inquisitive nature and studies on psychic abilities are benefiting you. It is your attitude to accept the reality. You are able to deal with facts. You were attended to and brought back. Is it acceptable? My intention was to thank you. Nothing is impossible when you put your mind to it. Even while we can't always shape our lives, we do have some say over many occurrences. Changing our viewpoint is one way to tackle a problem. Our perspective is more important than the actual circumstance. Just that. The actuality. 
So long as I can motivate them, I won't be able to send them there. You can access infinite consciousness without having a near-death experience. No, you can't. They won't be given to everyone. Everyone is different, but I say almost everyone since I've read and talked to a lot of people who have one. But love, boundless love, brings them together. Everyone has a connection to that awareness, even though I can't afford transportation there. Taking a picture of the Eiffel Tower will suffice if actually seeing it is out of the question. Drop by the park near you and strike up a conversation with the locals. Look at the iconic Eiffel Tower. Discover inner tranquility. Let your imagination run wild. Do some digging on the questions you have. Exhibit confidence. Nothing occurs unless we believe. There is wisdom to be learned from every situation. We are always being presented with opportunities to learn and grow by life itself. We can choose to ignore the repeated tap on the shoulder or react to it by gaining, developing, learning, evolving, and acquiring more magic.